Hello, my name is Julie Krizuk and I'm one of the counselors at Clarkston High School. Myself as well as, well as the other counselors are here to talk about everything you ever needed to know about building the right schedule for you. Staple to your scheduling card is your official transcript. Your transcript is an official report supplied by Clarkston High School on the record of an individual student. The transcript includes personal information such as your name, address, and date of birth. It is important to check your transcript for the accuracy of personal information. Next, your official transcript includes your rank, credits earned, grade point average, and total credits required for graduation. Please note that with the change to semesters next year, each class will have a change to their required number of credits to graduate. You will notice that your transcript lists each course you have taken at the high school level. Colleges use this document when reviewing applications, reviewing rigor of courses, and trends in grades. Transcripts will not list official test scores such as ACT and SAT. After high school, this document could be used in the future. Future employers may want to look at your attendance summary in high school. Finally, if you took a high school course such as biology, algebra, geometry, or world language classes, please make sure they are accurately identified on your transcript. Hi, I'm Kim McDaniel, counselor for the alphabet letters R, I through Z. As everybody knows, next year, Clarkston High School and the junior high will return to a semester schedule. This is a time for change for all of us. Students and parents should use the CHS curriculum guide available on the CHS counseling website to review any information presented here, to research questions about programs, courses, and prerequisites. Answers to any questions that surface should be found in the curriculum guide. For further clarification, students are encouraged to talk with their teachers about courses and course planning with their department. Next year, we are going to semesters. We will have two semesters with six hours in each day. 58 to 60 minute class periods. Lunch will revolve around fourth hour. Start and end times are yet to be determined. Because of this, the total number of credits required has been decreased. Students will be choosing 12 classes instead of 15 courses next school year. Graduation requirements will be different. English language arts will require four credits. One credit in ELA 9, one credit in ELA 10, one credit in ELA 11, and a credit of ELA electives in the 12th grade year. Study, social studies, three credits are required. A credit in US history or geography, a credit in world history geography, 0.5 of economics, 0.5 in civics. Science, three credits are required. One credit in biology, one credit of physical or chemical science, one credit of science elective. In math, four credits are required. A credit in algebra, a credit in geometry, one credit in algebra two, and one credit of math elective the senior year. World language requires two credits of the same language. Visual performing and applied arts totals one credit. Taking any art class, performing arts such as choir or band, applied tech, computers, web design will also count for the applied arts. Physical education, one full credit is required. A half of that must be PE health, which is required through the state of Michigan. The other half may be a PE elective choice from any that are listed in the curriculum guide. The grand total for graduation requirements to graduate in the year 2015 are 26 credits, 2016, 24.5 credits, and class of 2017, 23 credits total needed to graduate. On the back of the schedule card, students should check off any graduation requirement already completed as well as the courses that will be completed by the end of this school year. Ninth grade students who did not pass ELA 9, US History Geography, Algebra 1, or Biology are encouraged to enroll in night school or summer school to make up credit lost. These courses are not offered at CHS. 10th and 11th grade students who have failed courses or are behind in credits should include these courses on their scheduling card 
or plan to take the courses in night school or summer school. Now on to Mrs. French for EDP information. Hello, my name is Katie French and I'm the support counselor at Clarkson High School. Now that you know your graduation requirements, you may be wondering what electives should you take. Creating an EDP will help you narrow down your career pathway and choose your elective classes that align with your career interests. You must create an EDP, print it off, and attach it to your schedule card to be turned in to your counselor at the end of February. Even if you created an EDP last year, you must update the information with your current goals and next year's classes. Creating an EDP is easy using Career Cruising. Directions were attached to your schedule card, as well as your Career Cruising password. How to create and update your EDP. Go to www.careercruising.com. Sign in using the password provided on your scheduling card. If you did not have a password listed in your packet, it will be provided to you soon. If you are creating a new EDP, go to Assessments and Career Matchmaker and take the quiz to narrow down career choices. If you have already taken the quiz, you are not required to retake it. Go to the EDP. Enter in two career pathways and your goals. If you have already done this in years prior, please make sure last year's goals and pathways still apply. If you are applying to OTC, make sure your career pathway matches your OTC program. Go to Careers That Interest Me. Select two careers. If you've completed this last year, simply check to make sure those careers still apply. Go to the Education Plan. Enter in your classes for next year. This is the section that will not be completed from last year's EDP. Please make sure this is completed before moving on. When the program indicates that you are 100% complete, print the EDP and attach it to your schedule card. Please do not print if it does not say 100% complete. You have missed a step and need to go back. If you come to the library on scheduling day and it does not say 100% complete, we will not accept your scheduling card. Hello, I am Mrs. Tadoran. I am counselor for students with the last names F-E through K-O. We're going to take a look at the schedule card so that you can follow along and see what your requirements are. Um, for the purposes of this presentation, we're going to look at a 10th grade card since the 10th graders have a little bit more on their card. Um, they still have a lot more requirements to meet. So let's start off with math. Um, on the top of your card, you'll see that math teachers will be making recommendations for your courses. Um, you'll write in the course that you'd like to take and get a math teacher's signature. Next on the card is English. Um, you will have a couple of different options for English. At the 10th grade level, you can take Honors English, which would require a teacher's signature or regular English. At the 11th grade level, you can take AP English Composition or ELA 11. And again, the AP class would require a teacher's signature. At the 12th grade level, you can take AP English Literature or a variety of English electives. And again, the AP English would require a teacher's signature. For social studies, at the 10th grade level, there's two options, World History and Geography or Honors World History and Geography. Uh, the Honors course would require a teacher's signature. At the 11th grade level, students take a half credit of economics or they may opt to take AP Microeconomics, which would require a teacher's signature. And at the 12th grade level, students are required to take a half credit of civics or they may opt to take AP Government, which would require a teacher's signature. For science, uh, students are required to take a science elective or physics or chemistry requirement. So depending on where you're at in your path of science, talk to your teachers and find out which courses would be best for you. At the 10th grade level, there is an honors chemistry offered, which would require a teacher's signature, or you can choose from a variety of science electives. World language, we do encourage students to go beyond the two credits required in world language. However, you don't have to. If you would like to take more world language than the two credits required, you would just write it there on the line or in one of your elective boxes. And again, that would require a teacher's signature. You would have one spot left over on your schedule card for electives. And this could be a spot where you would put in any requirement that you have left to take, such as PE Health or a PE Elective, or perhaps you still need a Visual Performing Arts credit, or any other elective of your choosing. If you're choosing to take any AP courses as an elective, it would require a teacher's signature. On the bottom of the card, in the shaded areas, you can see that we have room for four alternates. You must put in four alternates. 
Um, it's not always guaranteed that you'll get the classes you choose on the top, so we need you to really research your alternates and make sure that you would be happy with whatever classes you put as your alternate should you be scheduled into one of them. On the bottom there, we have some application classes. Um, as you know, we offer a, a few classes that you can't sign up for directly, but you have to apply to get into them. Those classes would be leadership, newspaper, yearbook, a world of difference, Madrigals is an audition, Symphonic Wind Ensemble is an audition, and Teacher Education for the 11th and 12th grade level. Those courses all require an application. The applications can be found in the counseling office and all have different due dates. So please pay attention to when those applications are due and get them to the teacher um, on the application where it says it's due at. Next to those application classes, there's some lines there where you can write which classes you would drop should you happen to get into your elective, your application classes. So for example, if you're applying to leadership, you would check the leadership box and next to it write the two classes that you had written down as electives that you would like to drop if you are accepted into leadership. On the bottom of the card, we have a statement that we'd like you to read and have your parents sign as well, basically just stating you understand that these selections cannot be changed and that a lot of things depend on your course selection, so we simply don't have flexibility to change student schedules after the cards are submitted. Uh, to recap, I want to go over the classes that require a teacher signature one more time, and those are any courses that are AP, IB, or honors courses, any science courses, any math courses, any world language courses, band or choir, Technical theater, which is a class that students learn how to do lighting, sound, build sets for the plays, that requires a teacher's signature, and marketing two. If you've had marketing one, that course also requires a teacher's signature. The application courses, one more time, just to recap, are um, any student who's interested into going into OTC for the first time, um, that would require an application, leadership, Yearbook, Newspaper, Madrigals, Symphonic Wind Ensemble, A World of Difference, Independent Study, any seniors that are interested in doing an independent study, that would require an application, Teacher Education, and Early Graduation. For students who are going to be 12th graders next year, if you're interested in early graduation, uh, please see your counselor this spring to determine whether or not you're eligible. We have a new program that the student information system um, was purchased by the district called Synergy. And Synergy is basically going to replace the parent gateway. It's a program where students will be able to check assignments, their attendance, uh, emergency card information will be there. They'll be able to check their grades, sign up for courses online, um, communicate with teachers, perhaps assignments might be posted in Synergy. Um, so this is the first time that students will be accessing the Synergy system. There's a program within Synergy called Student View, and all students were given an access code to Synergy Student View so they can create their account for the first time and enter their courses online. Let's watch this short video that explains how students will enter their courses online on Student View. Getting started with Student View. Student View is a website that offers secure private access to school and student information, including assignments, grades, attendance, school calendar, and teacher contact details. Simply navigate to www.clarkston.k12.mi.us and click on the Student menu. Once on the Student menu, locate Student View and click on that. The following screen will appear. You will click on, I have an activation key and need to create my account. Read the privacy statement and click the accept button. Enter your name and activation key exactly as they appear in the letter from your school and click continue to step three. Choose a username and password at least six characters in length. Password can consist of numbers and letters and must be a minimum of six characters. Remember that passwords are case sensitive. Once you click the complete account activation button, you will be taken into your student view account. 
On the far left hand side you will click on course request. When the course request screen appears, click on the button that says click here to change course requests. Your screen will now look similar to this. You may either select a department from the drop down menu or simply type in the course title of the course you're looking for and click on search courses. A list of available courses will appear. Clicking on the blue triangle next to the course name will give you a description of the course if available. Select the request or alternate buttons next to the course name for the courses you'd like to choose. Once you're done selecting the courses for that department, click on Move Selected Request button. Repeat these directions for all departments as necessary. Once you have completely selected all your courses, six credits and two credits of alternates, click Return to Course Request Summary button. Once you're satisfied with your requests and you have the adequate number of requests based on your counselor's instructions, click on the Log Out button in the upper right hand corner of your screen. Do not click the Lock Course Request button. Once this button is clicked, they cannot be reopened by anyone but your counselor. Your counselor will lock your requests in once you're completed. So that was the Synergy program. It seems to be a pretty user-friendly program. Again, I'd like to just emphasize, please do not lock your courses in. After you've locked, entered your courses into the computer, your counselor will lock your courses in. When we meet with you in the Media Center to collect your schedule card, we'll make sure that what is on your card matches what's in the computer and we will lock it in for you. You should enter a minimum of six credits and two alternates. If you want to take a zero hour, you may enter in those in addition to the six credits that are required that you enter. Hello, my name is Jason Whalen, counselor at the high school for students whose last names begin with the letters A through FA. I'm going to be wrapping up our presentation today with a few important slides, beginning with the one that you're looking at right now. Choose your classes wisely. It's important that students take this process seriously. Our entire master schedule is based on what students request in this process. Everything from the number of sections that are offered to the class sizes of each of those sections is based on what you complete in the student course request process. Therefore, we can't account for students who change their minds after they submit their initial course requests. Once the schedule is set, there are very few circumstances where the counseling department and school administration will let you out of the courses that you request. A few reasons why we might make a change being that A, if a student needs to increase the academic rigor of their initial course request. B, if a student has to change their course request based on a class fail failure from this current academic year. Or if a student takes a summer school class for credit recovery or advancement, we will allow the student to change their courses for the following year. Also, on occasion, an incomplete schedule might occur um, for various reasons. Conflicts occur within the master schedule, and on occasion, students might find that there is an empty spot in their schedule. We will allow students to come in and pick from the list of courses that are available after the fact. Also, students, on occasion, by mistake, might select a course that they've already taken we encourage you to be thorough in looking at your current second trimester schedule as well as third trimester schedule before completing your course request for the upcoming year to be aware of what you have in the future. A few errors that we will not allow students to get out, out of their course request being any special requests for teacher changes, any students who are interested in decreasing the academic rigor of their schedule, any drop request for students who are looking to drop core academic courses to replace them with general elective courses or a student looking to drop a two semester class to add two separate one semester electives. And primarily as it relates to this course request process, we will not allow students to change their mind from an, an initial course request 
that you are putting on your schedule card to something that you choose at a later date. The form that you're looking at right now is the result of a schedule error request or a schedule change request. This particular student requested to get out of an AP US history course and replace it with team sports, media TV, and racket sports. Again, an example of a decrease in rigor and replacing a core academic subject area with general electives. Another example and something that we saw increasingly in the counseling department this year, right at the beginning of the year, we had about 40 rising 10th graders who requested to get out of honors ELA 10. All 40 of those students were told they must stay in their initial course request. Moving right along, some other important information to keep in mind as you complete your course request for next year. The curriculum guide is available on the Clarkson High School Counseling website at www.clarkston.k12.mi.us backslash chs. Once you're on the Clarkson High School website, click on the Counseling Department link on the left-hand side, and on the Counseling Department link, click to the Curriculum link, and you will see right there the 2014-2015 Curriculum Guide. I would encourage you all to walk through the Curriculum Guide thoroughly. Everything from graduation requirements to specific course descriptions, as well as some pertinent information about NCAA eligibility um, is all available right there on our curriculum guide on the website. Again, some other important things to keep in mind as you take a look at your schedule. It's important to consider all of the things that you have going on in your world uh, outside of school when you're picking your courses. Don't look at the individual courses alone take into account some of the extracurricular involvements that you have. Maybe you're working part-time after school. If you play three sports, um, hopefully as you progress in your high school career, you become more aware of some of the time management skills that are required to balance a, a rigorous academic schedule with your extracurriculars. Um, and, and you are wise about what you choose based on what you can handle. NCAA eligibility, for any student athletes who anticipate participating in NCAA Division I or Division II athletics, it's vital that you're taking a look at our curriculum guide to identify courses that are listed as NCAA qualifying courses. All prospective student athletes, regardless of their talent level or recruitment process, must qualify through the NCAA um, based on academic criteria. Those being 16 core academic classes prior to graduation. The class of 2015 has a minimum 2.0 GPA in those core academic courses. With that 2.0 GPA, students must have a 22 on the ACT. The class of 2016 and beyond all students must have the same 16 core academic courses. Ten of those core classes must be completed by the end of their junior year. Students in the class of 2016 and beyond must have a minimum 2.3 GPA. With that 2.3 GPA, they must have a 21 on the ACT in order to be eligible immediately to play Division I athletics. Also, as you're completing your course request for next year, we encourage you to take a look at your transcript. Make sure everything is accurate on there. And if you see any errors, please email your counselor so that we can get those corrected by next year. Finally, a few vital dates to keep in mind. At the high school, on February 20th, we will be hosting Curriculum Day. On Curriculum Day, Students will go through their five period schedule. In each one of their classes, the teachers will talk about the course offerings within their department, and they will also have an opportunity to sign off on your schedule request cards. At the end of students' five period day, we will have an exploratory hour. This, on February 20th, students will have a modified schedule. 
the final hour of the school day, students will have an opportunity to get any missing signatures that they didn't initially get on their schedule card. They will also have an opportunity to meet with specific teachers of courses that they are considering for the upcoming year to find out a little bit more information about their academic programs. Also, probably the most important dates to keep in mind, for 11th grade students, the Clarkson High School counselors will be in the media center on February 27th to collect your schedule request cards, your EDPs, and to look to see that you have clicked in your course requests on the Student View program. For 10th grade students, we will be available in, in the Media Center on February 28th. Once again, all students must have three things completed on those dates. A signed schedule request card signed by your parent and all the necessary teacher signatures. A completed, 100% completed EDP signed by a parent and all course requests, 6.0 credits, including and alternates, clicked into the course request program on student view.